Okay, what we've got here is a 1980 VIP with a Merc Cruiser 3.0 in it. Okay, we're going to get to the point here. If you guys upgrade to an electronic ignition, you'll hear them mention the resistor wire. I'm going to clear that up for you because I didn't cut mine off and it took me a year and a half to figure it out. The boat would start and it would run, but when you got out on the water, it'd fall on its face. I wound up replaced everything, and I do mean everything, including a cracked head and a cracked block. And this is a whole brand spanking new motor. Holly carburetor upgrade, electronic ignition upgrade, everything. Okay, look, first things first. My original motor had a Rochester carburetor that had a manual choke so I had to figure out how to wire the electronic choke if you upgrade to one um, just run you a ground wire a, a ground wire right here around it right up here okay um, this purple wire actually started out <laughs> Let me get in here okay look it is originally the reddish brownish looking wire if you trace it back through the harness it is purple it was originally connected right here see where I cut it off this other wire is yellow and purple right there you see it okay the purple wire and I left it purple I wired more purple wire onto it is the resistor wire it has built in two ohms if you go back with your stock coil that has no ohm rating it will say if you buy a new one it will say on the box external ballast resistor required that takes the place or rather your resistor wire takes the place of the ballast resistor okay if you buy a brand new coil now I upgraded to the hot spark electronic ignition system another one is the Pertronics electronic ignition system these coils come rated with an ohm rating this one is the German coil that I bought to match the hot spark it's rated at 2.2 ohms it's the blue one the blue coil okay if you go with this, now see, I, I'm telling you, I used everything. I had all kinds of problems. If you go with the A-Cell Superstock, this thing is rated at 3 ohms. This is the 8140. It worked. It worked great. Got it on the water. It fell on the face. And I got stranded on the lake. So this is what you do. You snip. If you go with an aftermarket coil, you snip that wire next to the purple and yellow. Leave the purple and yellow. Snip the other one right there. Okay. I ran mine to the positive on the choke. It works great. It is the resistor wire with a little length of wire added to it. And I left it purple. Coming up here to the choke. After you snip the wire, come down here to your alternator. You see that post down there? where the purple wire is actually there's two purple wires see them okay that post it will already have a purple wire on it it is switched 12 volts it has nothing when the keys off you turn the key on you have 12 volts run a wire from this post right here on your alternator to I used red and purple to the positive on your coil okay if you snip the resistor wire run a wire from the switched positive post which is purple on your alternator to the positive post you will then have three wires on your positive post you will have the red wire that comes from the distributor this one right here which comes from your magnetic pickup coil okay that comes from the distributor from the electronic ignition itself you will have the original purple and yellow wire and you will have I used red here on this end it's purple 
on this end so that I wouldn't get confused because there's another red wire that goes to the alternator. Um, you will have this wire here. So, you will have those three wires. The ground stays the same. The gray wires actually goes to the tack. And then this black wire, I think, goes to ground or something. But, my motor runs like a champ now. It's smooth. It fixed everything. Um, the way I figured it out was I was trying to time it. And it kept missing. The, the, the time, timing mark kept missing. So that's it. I got company. And I hope that helps you out. Y'all have a good day. Practice safe boating. And we'll catch you next time.